Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to all the students. Welcome back to PQS 514 Research Methodology class. And this week we'll be talking about topic number seven, which is the data analysis. So for data analysis, uh, it's very important that we understand this process normally come after the data collection process which you uh, where the data will be transformed into valuable information and uh, where this information can be useful to make a decision making or to make uh, some further analysis in the future so it's very important for students to understand that data analysis is a very important process and it has to be done carefully and uh, also it needs to be done with a proper procedure and uh, with a you know, scientific approach. So um, when we uh, the purpose that we as a mean a raw data, the first one is to look at the pattern, trend, and the relationship of the uh, outcome. So this is example how we can uh, draw the pattern, trends, and the relationship. Identify a major factor. For example, here we have a property. So what are the property major factor? Okay, for this one, okay, and search for themes and categories, and also looking at, um, you know, uh, the um, distribution of data. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, to establish nature of distribution of the data and relationship between them, and this can be uh, adopted using a statistic method. And this is example how we can present our data in terms of in a statistic form. Okay, we can use a pie chart, we can use a bar chart and so on. Okay, um, I'm very sure that you have been introduced to these two terms, which is a discrete, descriptive statistic and inferential statistic. So what is a descriptive statistic and what is an uh, inferential statistic? Uh, descript uh, descriptive uh, statistics are mainly uh, to quantify and to explain about the characteristic of the data. And inferential statistic is more like a predictive statistic where you are using a sampling and from there uh, it will be analyzed and generalized to find the factors and so on. Okay, uh, the explanation uh, on the um, this is an example of how uh, descriptive analysis is being carried out. Uh, we can use a histogram to represent uh, the data output and also looking at uh, the mean, okay, the standard deviation, okay, and median, and the minimum score and the maximum score of your data. So, what are the limitations of descriptive analysis? Okay, descriptive statistics are limited. Uh, they are only allow you to make a summary about a people or objective that you have actually measured. So, you cannot use the data you collected to generalize to other people or object. Okay. For the second type of statistic, uh, it's uh, inference about a population from uh, a sample, okay, a random sample drawn for it. So what is sample and what is population? Population, okay, for example, this is your population. You have various um, types of um, uh, individual with a different characteristic. And what is sample? Sample is where you take out a few sample of individual to represent the whole population okay so more generally uh, about a random process 
it's observed behavior during some period of time so it's just not one time but it requires some period of time include um, estimation interval is estimation hypothesis testing that um, or a statistical significant testing uh, used to infer something about the population from the sample that drawn based on the characteristic for example the characteristic here is individual with spectacles uh, okay within the age of um, perhaps less than 10 years or oh, perhaps this individual is um, 10 to 20 years old okay so uh, it represents the different age of population sorry a different age of uh, individual in that particular population of course we cannot do the whole population it will require more time costs and uh, also require more resources to conduct the survey so um, this um, kind of uh, analysis require uh, making prediction of values that are not really really known uh, so it requires to use uh, analysis such as regression correlation and so on this is the example of the data analysis that runs using the SPSS uh, software uh, which means uh, uh, you have a software to aid uh, to help you with your analysis and calculate whatever necessary for your uh, study for example in this analysis is looking at the r square value okay the standard error of estimate it will help you to calculate uh, and this is the ANOVA uh, analysis and this is a coefficient analysis so the things that as a researcher when you have a software to help you to analyze and to produce an output from your data to make it a valuable information as a researcher we must have a knowledge on how to interpret the data so it's very important because if we interpret data wrongly we'll, we will represent a wrong information to other people so we need to know what is a uh, R square all about uh, perhaps what is a mean square um, standard deviation uh, significant value uh, coefficient will keep the standardized coefficient and how this coefficient will help you to determine your data reliability so what are the limitation of inferential statistic so there are two main limitation highlighted here okay the first one is the most important limitation is uh, present in all uh, inferential statistics that you are providing data about a population that is not fully measured because remember we are not using the whole population but we are using the sam sampling technique and therefore it cannot ever be completely sure that the value or the statistic you are calculated are correct so that is the first limitation and the second limitation is that uh, it is connected with the first limitation uh, but not all uh, inferential stats require the user uh, to make educated guesses which mean a hypothesis uh, or a theoretical um, uh, basis okay to run this inferential test so it's very important that the researcher or, or the one who carried out the research to truly understand uh, and to have a very uh, strong and um, a confidence level of guesses uh, based on theory that is why when we do a statistic analysis using infer inferential statistic, uh, the most important thing is when we are make making the guesses uh, or hypothesis on a sound theory, so we must make sure that we also validate the points by asking uh, the population or, or the actual practitioner out there on the 
points that we are going to uh, validate through this statistic analysis. So what are the similarities between descriptive and inferential statistics? So both uh, of these statistics rely on the same set of data, which means you can collect the data. At the same time, you can run two types of uh, statistic analysis, which is descriptive and inferential statistic. Descriptive statistic relies uh, on this set of data. Meanwhile, inferential also rely on this data in order to make generalization about a larger population. Which means uh, we have our uh, population here. And then uh, they are sampling will be taken out uh, as an example. A very small sampling. So one, two, three here. And then when you are making an analysis based on this um, sampling. And uh, with that, you can uh, help to make a generalization about a larger population. But remember, both have uh, their uh, limitation um, uh, on the accuracy and reliability of the information. So, um, for data analysis, looking at the examine the raw data, uh, so it should be uh, organized uh, in organized manner and can be uh, uh, in order of magnitude ascending or descending kind of data. So, it's very important to have or uh, to analyze the frequency distribution table in order to look at the uh, the score achieved uh, for the data collection together with the number of times uh, that the score occurred. So all of this can be done through Excel, a simple Excel file, or it, you can utilize the available software out there such as the SPSS. So it's very important because it will give you the value and the number of occurrences or what we call as a frequency of the each value. So which means, uh, remember the population with the spectacles, uh, with a different group of age, for example, um, we have less than 10 years old, okay, and then we have uh, more than 10, less than less than 20 or more than 20 less than 30 so you're going to have a table here so perhaps uh, less than 10 you have about 8 uh, you have about uh, 6 and for this sampling you have about 7 so this is what we call as a frequency so uh, charting the frequency distribution table you can use histogram you can use a frequency polygon or you can use the common gun chart pie chart or the line the line chart okay uh, this is a example of the bar chart here is a bar chart and this is a histogram so I'm sure the students uh, you know the difference between these two types but there's an explanation there uh, so basically the chart looks like this so, um, I think uh, that's all for part one. So, I'm going to meet you for a part two of this topic. See you soon.